Hello everyone, so this is part four, the final part of this mini-series where we'll be talking about the book Spiritism in its Simplest Expression. The last video we were talking about the last chapter of this book, which was entitled, <coughs> which is entitled Maxims Taken from the Spirit's Teachings. We had talked about the first part of it, and we finished off covering the topic of prayer in a very succinct manner. And now we're moving on to item 52 of this chapter. And item 52 through uh, the next few items talks about wealth, a very interesting subject for us, for many of us in this life, because unfortunately for a majority of us in this world, wealth is such an important thing. So let's get to it. Item 52 says wealth is a deposit, deposit which holders are but stewards, since they cannot take it to their graves. They will render a strict account for the use they made of it. 53 says, Wealth is a more difficult trial than poverty, because the former is a temptation to abuse and excess, and because it is harder to moderate, to be moderate, than to be resigned. If we have a great amount of means with which to accumulate things, an ease with which to possess things, life becomes more difficult. Because if we are not able to manage a great amount of wealth, the wealth will consume us and will destroy us from within. We look at all of these celebrities who have a lot of money and how sad and depressed they always are. And that truly tells us and shows us that money cannot buy happiness. We cannot get, attain happiness through material means. How can we look for happiness which is not a tangible thing, intangible objects that time destroys? If we place happiness on things that are temporary, our happiness will also be temporary. If we allow happiness to be placed upon the things that are intangible and immortal and eternal, then all of a sudden the happiness, those things that make us feel good, that are truly wealth, that are the true wealth in this life and the next life and the success, successive existences and the greater life, then we will have this really good feeling and sensation that we call here on earth happiness. We have to shift our focus. And we see these celebrities and these wealthy people sometimes, um, you know, they get involved in addiction with certain, um, with the usage of certain drugs and uh, alcohol, and it is very unfortunate. But they do so because they come in this life with all of this wealth to see how well they'll manage it. And unfortunately, they fail in, their, in the process because they allow the wealth to consume them and to shift the focus of their life. And so, things become easy and it's easy to obtain and to possess these things and then I look for this cheap thrill for this quick sensation this excitement but as soon as it's over I'm looking for something even more exciting never ever ever quenching the thirst that I have for this thing that I have this existential void which material wealth cannot fulfill it is drinking from the ocean water the salt water that causes us to get thirsty and thirsty the more we drink from it we have to instead drink from the fresh water, the living water of the Christ, or the fresh water of the divine life of the greater life. And when we analyze, and this is why Spiritism is so great, and when we analyze things through the lenses of Spiritism, through this perspective, then all of a sudden things become different for us. The wealth no longer consumes us, and we said we put it to good use. And wealth is a trial. It is a trial. Because it's a test for us. How will we put the means with which the Father gave us to live a good life here, how will we put it to good use? Are we going to put it to the good use of our own selves? Or are we going to put it to good use to those who really need it? To our brothers and sisters who perhaps don't have as much as we've been given, as much as we've been blessed with in this existence. So it is a, it boils down to choice and to our focus. We shift the focus from the material things to the immaterial things, and all of a sudden the money becomes simply a tool with which to help make the material things even greater. Because the money itself is not bad. Nothing is bad per se. It is an inanimate object. It is the user of the tool that makes it bad, quote unquote, or good, quote unquote. So it depends on what we do with things, much like a driver. The car itself is not a weapon, but it depends on how the driver uses the car. So it is how we use things in this life. So everything that we have is a tool that puts us to the test. So let's always reflect on this. So somebody who's poor has limited means, they can't do all these things. So it is an easier life. 
It may seem harder from our perspective because we think of the earthly life, but it is easier for the poor person because they don't have those, that many things to worry about. A wealthy person has businesses and possessions and properties. It's just a headache. It is a headache. It is just so many things to worry about that we see all these wealthy people stressed with heart problems, with um, all sorts of diseases from all the accumulation of all these negative and bad energies of having to manage all of these things because this is all that matters to them. And poor people, God bless them and God bless the other ones as well. They live a simple and humble life. And sometimes the farmer in a remote village in Asia or um, in Africa or in South America or even here in the US, uh, in North America, in Europe, they live a much happier life because they have limited means. And they don't have to worry about all these other things. All they have to worry about is you know, doing what is right for them and doing what is right for their family and caring for them and perhaps living out a good life, a decent life, a decent, honest, hardworking life. Not to say that those with wealth are not also decent, hardworking and honest. Obviously, there's, exception to every, there's an exception to every rule. But it is really, it truly boils down to how we use things. How do we put them to use? Is it towards the good? Is it towards the selfish wants and needs? How do we do the, this thing? How do we use these things? So let's always reflect on that. Adam 54 says, the ambitious persons who succeed and wealthy persons who revel in material pleasures are more to be pitied than envied for there will be consequences. We've talked about this here and obviously there will be consequences. That we might reincarnate in a life where we have no means because we didn't put the means that we had to good use. So whatever we thought we had will be taken away from us. But if we put it to good use, then perhaps what we've been given, we will receive even more so. That is one of the passages in the gospel. So it is interesting because it makes sense in this way when we, when we look at it this way and we reflect about it via the trial of wealth in an existence that we may have on earth. Um, by means of the terrifying examples of those who used to live and who have come to reveal their fate, Spiritism demonstrates the truth of what Christ said, whoever exalts himself shall be brought low and whoever lowers himself shall be exalted. Then we see this in the book entitled The Gospel According to Spiritism and chapter 2 entitled um, My Kingdom is Not of This World Item 8 we see a communication from a spirit that tells us about this type of trial with wealth and the passage is entitled An Earthly Kingship I'll read the passage to you Item 8 who better than I can understand the truth of these wor words of our Lord, my kingdom is not of this world. I lost myself in pride while on, on the earth. Who then could understand the insignificance of earth's kingdoms, if not I? Well, what of my earthly kingdom did I bring back here with me? Nothing, absolutely nothing. And as if to, take m to make my lesson more terrible, it did not even accompany me to the tomb. I was a queen amongst men, as a queen, I thought I would enter the kingdom of heaven. Such delusion, such humiliation, when, instead of being received as a sovereign, I saw above me, far above me, beings whom I had deemed quite small and whom I had despised, because they were not of noble blood. Oh, how I then understood the barrenness of the, of the honors and grandeurs that I so eagerly th sought on earth. In order to prepare oneself for a place in this kingdom, self-denial, humility, charity in all its heavenly forms, and benevolence toward all are required. You are not asked who you were or what position you occupied, but what good you did, the tears you wiped away. Remembering that those who spent a lifetime wiping the tears of others don't have time to wipe their own tears because they're being helpful, and by being helpful, we're we feel so blessed and happy that we just don't even focus on our problems because we're so busy helping others. Continuing on. Oh Jesus, you said that your kingdom is not of this world because one must suffer in order to reach heaven and the steps of a throne cannot lead us to it. Only the most trying paths of life do. Therefore, seek your path through the briars and thorns and not amongst the flowers. People run after earthly things as if they were able to keep them forever. But here there are no more illusions. 
they soon perceived that they had only been chasing a shadow and that they had neglected the only possessions that were solid and durable, the only ones they could use in the heavenly home, the only ones that, gave, that give them access to it. Have pity on those who have not gained the kingdom of heaven. Help them with your prayers, for prayer brings people closer to the Most High. It is the link of union between heaven and earth. Do not forget that. And this was a message communicated by a medium in 1863 in Havre, in Havre, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but uh, from a queen of France in the mid to late 19th century during Kardec's uh, codification of Spiritism. And again, this is found in item 8 of chapter 2 of the Gospel According to Spiritism, a very highly recommended book, part of the five seminal works of Spiritism. So that passage, I think, um, talked about and covered a lot about wealth that is found succinctly summarized in this chapter, in the last part of this third chapter of this little book, as well as about prayer that we talked about in the last video. So I think it was a good way to wrap up everything with a nice bow and this wonderful gift 